we uh, in experimentation team in my company switch from the cost center mindset when we were trying to enable other team and uh, make life easier for them for them to implement some changes to a profit center mindset where our first priority is to do changes by ourselves when we can do it and directly influence key business metrics looking like a baddie i show up and make them stop wanna know my name so badly because i run this whole block fit my hair move my head show the world i'm royalty when i walk by they be taking baths because they know i'm the queen yeah Hello, my name is Elisa and I'm a product manager in experimentation team in Preble. And in the session today I will tell you a story about shifting perspective. And then we will switch to the main topic, which is transforming the internal experimentation team into a profit center. I will share with you more information about the team I'm working with, definitions of cost and profit center, three steps we did to become a profit center and the mindsets that changed along the way. So let's start from a story and please note that it may not be fully historically correct. Imagine traveling back to 16th century when one of the best Ottoman Empire scientists, Taki al -Din, invented the basis of a steam edge. And yeah, you heard this correct, a basis of steam engine invented centuries before the Industrial Revolution. And here it when it gets interesting, because Taki al -Din did something unexpected. At least unexpected from our point of view of people who already know about multiple applications of a steam engine but probably something quite expected from a people back then. So, he turned his invention into a kebab spinner. I guess it was the tastiest kebab ever. But now, when we are looking back to the steam engine, it just feels like there are so much more applications. It is a basis of revolution in transportation, agriculture, and urbanizing the cities. What I want to tell by this story is that sometimes perspective limits us from seeing the full potential of great inventions. In this case, when your final goal is to automate a kebab making, you may not notice other amazing applications of your invention. And I'm afraid that the similar can happen to experimentation team. But I'm here not to let this happen. In this part I will share our experience of transforming the internal experimentation team into a profit center. Let me start with the introduction. I work in Preply. Preply is online learning platform for learning languages with tutors. We have more than 35,000 of active tutors and hundreds of thousands of active learners per month. And we also run more than 500 experiments yearly. I work in experimentation team in Preply. We are responsible for establishing experimentation platform. Also, we develop experimentation culture and measure the total impact of experimentation. What we don't do is we don't run individual experiments. That's product team responsibility. I joined Preply two years ago as a data engineer in experimentation team, and since then I did a switch to a product manager. It happened a couple of months ago, and the main question I had during the switch is how to define the success for my team. For internal experimentation team. And I started to talk a lot to our stakeholders and to people outside Preply who are working with experimentation. And I received a lot of ideas and a lot of metrics on how I could potentially measure success. And honestly, I was a bit overwhelmed. 
to the point where I realized that actually there are only two types of teams and they measure success totally different. They are cost center and the profit center. Cost center is the team that focuses on spending money and doing it efficiently. Example, uh, accounting team or human resources team. You don't expect that they will bring money to the company, but they will give you other benefits. While profit center is the team that focuses on bringing money to the company. And the classic example is sales team. So where is the experimentation team here? The classic answer to this is cost center. This is Romo Santiago from Experiment Nation. Every week we share interviews with and conference sessions by our favorite conversion rate optimizers from around the world. So if you like this video, smash that like button and consider subscribing. It helps us a bunch. Now back to the episode. Typically, experimentation team considered to be a cost center. And in this paradigm, the metrics that we are interested in are user satisfaction and enablement. We want to make sure that product teams that use the frameworks that we created are satisfied and they can run a lot of experiments and that's easy and convenient for them. Also, we want to ensure tools adoption because without adoption, our tools are not being useful. And lastly, we want our platform to be trustworthy and to be stable. We want the right data and we want it fast. So those are the metrics that we are using when we are talking about experimentation team as a cost center. But my opinion is that experimentation team can do more and become a successful profit center. And let me share you three steps we did to become a profit center. They are introducing a new framework, incremental improvement, and preventing losses. And let me highlight that even though I will tell different stories, but they are all focused on a single metric, and it is a key business metric. And generally, when we are talking about profit centers, what we want to optimize is a key business metric, or the set of key business metrics if your company has several of them. So the first story happened in 2020, long before I joined Preply. And we introduced uh, the first framework for A-B testing, and we started to introduce every change to our platform as A-B test. Also, we started presenting the results of tests in terms of different metrics, and we created a global holdout group to measure performance of all tests altogether. And I will remind you what it is in the next slide. What we didn't have is we didn't have uh, any decision-making rules. We had some guidance that you'd better not to scale negative, but generally we were quite open and relaxed and product team could uh, do whatever they want. A reminder about global holdout group. It's a method for measuring the cumulative effect of all A-B tests together. What we do is we fix 10% uh, of our users, or can be any other number, and they don't see any uh, running or scaling already implemented for all people uh, experiments for specific amounts of time. In our case, it was four months. And other 90% of people you are making some new features for them, changing something, experimenting, and introducing new features for them. But for those 10%, they only see your platform as it was uh, before the start of this holdout group. So what we expected to see is to see an increase in group B because we experimented there and we introduced a new functionality. But what really happened in four months, we saw minus 2% insignificant result in our key business metric. And we were sad and in attempt uh, to fix it, we introduced decision-making rules. Basically, they were as simple as let's scale only positive on a target metric experiment, experiments. 
So here we introduced an option of target metric because before we didn't have one, we just tracked all the metrics. And here we said, let's only implement and scale to 100% of users only those experiments that are positively significant. And with this approach, we achieved plus 5% uh, significant result on our key business metric. Just to highlight you the importance of what happened before not experimenting, actually the results of all product team efforts, they brought us insignificant result, meaning we didn't really change anything because we were adding something good, but then we were adding something bad for our users, not even knowing that it is bad for them. And then we uh, successfully turned it to significant positive result. So it was long ago and after this a lot of things happened and uh, we already have the, an established framework with a specific rules. And then we wanted uh, to improve it and make our results even better. That's when we started to think about our decision-making rules. Those are the rules we use to decide if we want to stop experiments and not implement the new feature or the changes we implemented or we want all people to see them. They used to be uh, scale if the target metric is significant, and we define this significance as p-value less than 0.05. And we had additional check for not having errors and not harming guardrail metrics. And then we decided to change a p-value threshold and basically to allow scaling more tests, even though we are not so sure that they are positive. And it is an example of the incremental change we did. So what we saw is X3 improvement by changing decision-making rules. And it is huge. So before making this change, let's say if we had plus 5% improvement, then with those changes, we would have plus 15. And it is dramatic. And that's something experimentation team can do. And the last example is about preventing losses. Because we are often uh, focusing on something positive. We are choosing carefully positive tests. We are scaling the, them, introducing to all the people. And we don't typically pay attention to negative tests. But they are there and value of the experimentation team is there as well. So at some point, we decided to calculate expected combined outcome from all positive and negative tests separately and just compare them for visibility. So what we figure out, uh, we used uh, a simple formula. We took all positive tests all together and sum up uh, their uplift adjusted to exposure. So Basically, if we believe that uh, the result of test is true, we just sum those results and the same did uh, for negative tests. And what we figure out is that the harm prevented by not scaling negative tests is 1.5 times bigger than the benefit we receive from all scale tests, from all positive tests. It was actually surprising because we are trying to introduce some uh, great features to our users, but what we figure out that sometimes happens that we introduce in bugs or we are just broken in the experience on some other ways we haven't thought of. And an important uh, piece of work that experimentation team does, it's uh, saving the users from uh, those uh, negative tests. So let me also give uh, a profit center advantages why we decided and why we are going this way, not a cost center way. For us, it's really important that we see a straightforward business impact. It is very motivating and it also makes it so much easier to talk to your stakeholders and for them to understand the value experimentation team brings. 
Also, it elevates the influence of experimentation in the company. You can tell a lot of times how important it is to use statistics, but when you present the results, it sounds more convincing. So, let me sum up it with the mindset change. We, uh, in experimentation team in my company, switch from the cost center mindset when we were trying to enable other team and uh, make life easier for them, for them to implement some changes, to a profit center mindset where our first priority is to do changes by ourselves when we can do it and directly influence key business metrics. Now, our definition of success looks like steer Prattly development by bringing trustworthy insights about our users. And we really want to steer this development and we already have a lot of examples how we did it and we want to continue doing that. Also, returning back to the analogy with the kebab. Kebab, uh, kebab spinner is an amazing and sometimes that's what you need when you're hungry, you need a kebab spinner, not a train. But you can also lead an industrial revolution as well. And I just want you to remember that it is an option. And for experimentation team, it is an option. You can make your team the profit center. If you're part of experimentation team, you're in amazing place to make this happen. So thank you for your attention. I hope those examples were useful. And if you want to ask me something or continue discussion, you can find me in LinkedIn. Thank you a lot. And I wish you to achieve success in a way you define it. Bye bye. This is Roma Santiago from Experiment Nation. Every week we share interviews with and conference sessions by our favorite conversion rate optimizers from around the world. So if you like this video, smash that like button and consider subscribing.